Good morning, folks. So here we are. It is now Thursday, October 29th. Yesterday, we were working on the forms of reactions that enzymes catalyze. So we were looking at our dehydration synthesis, which removes the water to bring things together. And we were looking at hydrolysis, which adds in the water to break things apart. So that is our basis for building and breaking of every molecule that makes up every gram of your entire being. It was all built by breaking down those source materials and then rebuilding them like using Legos over and over and over and over again, thanks to our enzymes. So today what I wanna do is I wanna move on to our pH scale and hopefully help everybody to easily understand this. pH is a very simple topic. There's really only one rule that you need to worry about. So here is our two reactions and here's pH. Now that little p, capital H, is on purpose. That is not an accident. This is how you refer to pH because what pH actually means is parts of hydrogen. So parts is the little p, hydrogen because it's an element is a capital H. So what we do with this though, is we basically use it to measure how strong something is as an acid or as a base. And if you look here on the chart, you can see that as numbers go below seven, we're on the acidic side. As numbers go above seven, we're on the basic side. Now, a lot of people like to believe that acid is bad for you. You know, you, people will dissolve other people in acid in movies and stuff like that. And therefore, base is good for you. That is not the case. Acids and bases are both dangerous for you. Just because something is a base does not mean it's good. Let's take a look at some examples. All right, so from pure water here in the middle at seven, which is neutral, if we go up on the basic side, human blood, our blood is slightly, ever so slightly basic. Seawater, baking soda, the milk of magnesia, which is a lot like Pepto-Bismol, ammonia, bleach, oven cleaner. Now, I don't know about you guys. A couple of years ago, there was a TV show about people with weird obsessions. And I don't remember the name of it, like it was like, like my weird obsession or something like that. And one of them was literally somebody who was like addicted to eating oven cleaner. And when she spoke, you saw that like her mouth had all kinds of damage. Her teeth were like broken and partially dissolved. Oven cleaner is unbelievably powerful as a base. An oven cleaner will treat your system just like a high acidity acid will. It will just start to eat things away and rip them apart. There's a reason why bleach and ammonia are toxic to us. And that reason is largely due to their pH. Let's look at the other side, though. All right, so that was going on the basic side. Now let's go below seven on the acidic side. Milk is slightly acidic. Pea is slightly acidic. There's coffee, tomatoes, wine, vinegar, sodas, beer, lemon juice, stomach acid. There's a lot of foods on this acidic side. And some of them get pretty strong. Now, it is worth noting Every number you see here is 100 times stronger than the previous. So when you go from five on coffee to four on tomatoes, those tomatoes are 100 times more acidic than the coffee was. And it just keeps building up and up and up and up. So here is the breakdown that you need to know about pHs. If the number is lower, then it's a stronger acid. Two is a stronger acid than three. Three is a stronger acid than five. And then on the flip side, literally, the higher the number, the stronger the base is. So 10 is a stronger base 
than nine. Nine is a stronger base than eight. So the further you go from seven, the lower is acid, the higher is base. Now we can take a look at, I don't know why these numbers are all sitting there. There we go. Um, we can take a look at why that happens. Now, this becomes a little bit less important for you guys to know specifically. So focus on that first slide with the rules, less on this ions part. But so you understand, what happens is acids leave hydrogen ions in the water. Those ions are positively charged because they're missing an electron. So they want an electron really badly and they will rip it out of anything that they can in order to get that electron to make them feel better. And that means that if acid pours on your arm, the reason that we can start to feel pain and burning and like get real damage is because that acid is ripping away all of those electrons that's breaking the bonds that hold your skin together. And so we start to dissolve. Now, on the same realm, though, bases will leave uh, OH minus ions in the water. And those will act the exact same way, but they have an extra electron. So now what they're going to do is they're going to try to get rid of that extra electron. And guess what? It has the exact same response to our tender flesh. All it does is find those bonds and go, hey, you guys don't need to be bonded together to share electrons anymore. Here's an extra one. Take it. Be happy. And so the bonds break. If the bonds break, we have problems. So this is uh, sulfuric acid. Timmy was in our chemistry class, but Timmy is no more. For what he thought was H2O was H2SO4. It's a rhyme I uh, recall all the way back from college. H2SO4, that's sulfuric acid. If it's added to water, it's going to drop off a bunch of these uh, sulfur uh, oxygen ions. But here are those hydrogen plus ions. And that's what's dangerous to us. If we take a base like NaOH, it will separate into the sodium cation or positive charge and the OH negative ion, which once again will start messing with your bonding. Now, interestingly, if you take an acid and a base of the same concentration we can bring them together in a process called neutralization. And if you take an H and an OH and you put those together, what do they form? HOH. If we simplify that, it turns into H2O. So when an acid and a base combine, they will neutralize one another and turn into water. Perfect. So how do we go about actually testing this and working on it? Well, let me show you. We have these little pH papers. These are our test strips. Inside each one, we have the little orange papers and a color guide. The color guide basically tells us what color means what pH. So you can see a pH of one is very red, and then it kind of goes more towards yellow as we reach our neutral, right around seven. And then as we go into the basic, we start to go green and then blue. So what we're able to do is we're able to very easily take a strip. And then what we want to do is we just want to dip it into a substance and compare the color. So for instance, I dipped this one into a substance that I've got over here. Now I compare it to this chart. And I would probably say that this looks like a two. Then we can use the other side. You're not getting enough on it, so it's not dangerous to you. And you can see the other side has turned this dark brown. Well, if we take a look at this chart, 
I would probably put this at a 13. And that's how we do our testing. So today's lab is going to be a pH lab based around testing many different substances with these strips. If you want help with that lab, check our next video. Otherwise, I hope that everyone has had a great day or has a great day, and I'll see you soon.